Thank you. Um, I uh, this this piece is actually very uh, important to me. This actually started as one of my first uh, improvised monologues. I I actually I'm an improv comedian uh, mainly, and then I discovered poetry through that. And um, so this this is something that I took into poetry, and um, it's it's insanely personal. And thank you for being here and sharing this. Do it. Yeah. Scott Green and I started the same summer in 1993 at my uncle's tattoo parlor in East Providence. He was always blaring deep purple and trying to turn me on to Black Sabbath and other bands with too much hair. We'd celebrate late nights at Big Friends with coffee and the occasional creamer that would defy gravity with its viscosity and consistency. The man's ink covers much of my epidermis. On February 20th, 2003, at the Station Nightclub in West Ward, Rhode Island, Great Whites played a small concert to a capacity crowd where 100 people spent their last night snuffed out by flames. One of them was Scott Green. He had tattooed the lead singer the day before and been tipped tickets to his demise. News was scarce and I wondered how such a heavily tattooed man could take so long to be identified slowly dawning on me with sickening realization just how blackened and charred his ink and skin must have been. Wondering what his last moments must have been like, clawing through the crowd to get out of there. Seeking solace, I looked to see what others were saying online, the debates on safety, the finger pointing, the question of how could that building have gone up in flames that fast, and the one answer that stood out, hairspray. And with that, I laughed loudly and great beats of sobs to the sixth song of gallows humor, that inappropriate joking I so desperately needed, clinging to comedy to explain away this tragedy, making one mask out of two. We're a sick lot, those of us who need this, like teenage cutters free and flowing emotion with razor wit. Off-color offensive humor can cost it between falling towers and breaking levees, making sense out of senses of humor and never giving in to the outrage cries of too soon. Like my dad at his own father's wake. Our grandfather, my pepe looking at a room swamped with eyes and loudly declaring how Pep wanted to be buried face down so the world could kiss his ass. Oh, yeah. Breaking up this small gag box that would shake and exclaim, hey, hey, let me out of here, whenever you bumped or shook it. Dad threatened to put it in the coffin with conspiratory glee. <laughs> On a shady funeral day, while burying our Pepe, my father broke. Emotion flowed out of him as he was handed a triangular flag, and for the third time in my life, I saw him cry. No cloak of laughter or jokes, just raw sorrow that turned to hold him bumping his jacket pocket, laughing loudly as we shook in time to the goddamn gag box that he'd hidden there. <laughs> Surrounded by a shitload of shaking heads and three sets of seven shots, punctuated with the cries of 100 tiny people trapped in a box. Hey. Hey, let me out of here. Um.